Hello, I'm G, and this is one of our, every Saturday we have a mini class, 10 or 15 minutes. Well, I think the last time I did it was six. But, but this one is how to bless and dress candles. And there's a couple of things you, you may not know that are um, unique to dressing candles. It's a lot of times people come in looking for the ones that are printed. Like this is come to me, money drawing, and the thing to remember about these is they, um, you know, they go down an assembly line in a factory where it puts in the wick, it pours the wax. Before that, these go down an assembly line and are pre-printed on there, but there's no magic inside. Nothing about it is magical. It is just a candle. Um, now, with that said, and we'll get into how you make it magical. The wording can help you focus what you're doing. Because every time you see it, it's sort of like when you make a sigil, if you're familiar with those. When you make um, sigils, the point is that it, uh, every time you see it, it reminds you what it's for. It has you put energy in that direction. So, that can help. Now, you should actually use anointing oils on them that are made by, make sure they're made by a company that, that knows how to make their oils. That they're, they contain herbs, roots, flowers, sometimes zoological items that are historically associated with whatever spell you're trying to do. So you will find some oils that are just fragrance and those don't usually have magical connotation to them. Some people say your intention is all that's important. Well, if that's true, then just put Chanel number five on it. So <laughs> I like to use things that have herbs that were historically used for that purpose in magic. Um, I'll show you a trick that Roy and I do is for fire safety is we will get one of these, which is for the larger carving candles, the ones you're actually meant to carve figures into and then drop down and it fits in here perfectly. We use them. This is one from my altar up front. We use them as buffers. Where inside I actually have sand in the very bottom, just about that much. And then we drop it down in there and if this breaks, it breaks into this not into the room. So there's a little bit of fire safety. And you can also take these and print your own label to continuously use over and over. If you look at our altar, some of us have them. I have one up front um, for a money drawing and I actually have a mercury dime taped to it. Some of them I have metal and, and jewelry attached to it. So you can make it however you want. So this would be seven day candle. Before I dress them with oils, because I don't want to dump it all upside down, what I like to do, and you can do it with this too, is smoke cleanse inside the candle, which would you know, it helps. You don't know who's touched this. Who touched it and eyeballed it before you? Somebody even in the factory could have had a really bad day. And I like to do this. And then from the bottom and let it come up all the way around it. Now I have actually seen in some shops where the people who do these, the carved ones, what they'll do is this. You could do it for this same purpose. They'll do this and they cap it. And when they're ready to drop their candle down in there, they release it. So that way it's all cleansed. So that way this is cleansed before you anoint it for your magical purpose. Um, 
it doesn't it takes less oil and herbs than you think it does to dress a candle it's just mainly that the energy is on there so you would take something there's a pocket knife and you can poke holes in it you can put in this is going to be a money candle we're going to use this you know we have one in the front that we use every week so this is going to be our backup and that one runs out what you can do you can either poke holes down in it just to let the oil seep a little bit or you can take it and for the, in this instance carve dollar signs into it and that'll give the oil a place to go now I saw someone one time and he just went overboard was he actually got a drill with a tiny tiny bit and he went to drill holes all the way down to the bottom <laughs> And, it, and wondered why it didn't burn right. There is such a thing as messing with the science of a candle. A candle burns a certain way because it's made a certain way. It's made with a specific size wick to help it burn the way that it should according to the diameter of the glass. So if you were to fill this with oil, it's going to seep up the wick and not burn correctly. So what I do is take one of our bottles which is just the money drawing I don't even do a whole cap I do a third of a cap and just drop it in there and you can also do this I've done this many times is just take it and get it on my finger and rub it in and I can rub around the inside of the glass too if I want to, but it's not so much that it drowns it out. And then you can anoint it with herbs. I've seen people go overboard with those too, and it all catches on fire. It just needs a sprinkling. Since this is money drawing, this is catnip to attract customers. That shit works. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> Alfalfa, which is money drawing, and it's just a sprinkle and a little bit of fenugreek. Cinnamon would be an, another thing you can use, which is probably in your kitchen cabinet. And that's just a little bit. It doesn't take a big mound that's going to go up in flames to work. The herb amount. Reading the signs. Um, let me tell you, before I tell you how to read the signs in them, let me tell you how that when you burn these, people sometimes will ask, um, I burned it and it didn't work, should I burn another one? Well, how long has it been? It's only been a week, so give it time. To me, if you then burn another one right behind it, you're telling the universe, I don't trust this one. So cancel out all that work and let me do it all over again. But there is something called burning in runs, which means you intend for this to have backup candles. So you would anoint all of them at once and mark them one, two, three, or seven, or 13, or whatever you're gonna do. And when this one finishes, you like, you go to number two and light it, and then number six. But that, to me, that is, you intended to do it that way. It's not mistrust of the first one, it's just making a big spell. And then you could actually, when you do things in runs, it helps tell a story. Maybe the first one is all black, which means blockages. And then maybe it clears up by the end or it gets worse by the end, which tells you it's not working. So the last thing I wanted to cover was how to read. This is one I was burning to, um, it's a sort of a compassion, charity candle towards being good to my clients it's burning clearly but sometimes you might have a black ring around the top and that means if it's a, on the top but it cleared up that means you had a little bit of blockage in the beginning but you fixed it if it's all black then you have a problem that's ongoing if it burns clean all the way down that's also successful is but leaves some wax in the bottom that usually means 
Okay, the rest of the candle is clear, but there's a little bit of wax. That means there's just some little obstacle you have to overcome before whatever you ask for. Usually not something that big. And sometimes it will leave wax, but leave a circle you can see through, like a telescope, which means it's even less of a blockage because you can actually see the end of, see the, end of the tunnel. So that is actually how to bless and dress seven day candles. So any questions? Yeah. Um, so like that blue one, you burned ha about half of it. Yeah, I'm just um, done. But go ahead. So <laughs> when you are, are wanting to use it again, should you re-anoint it? Or is the one time good to candle? One time is good. Most tr traditionally, I did not bring that up. Traditionally, people will burn these beginning to end and let them keep going. But that's another part of candle safety is you may not come, feel comfortable doing that and leaving the house with burning candles and I don't recommend that. Um, I always tell people at the end of the day, blow it out, thank it for its daily work and then restate your intention when you, when you light it. And some people will say, well, you're not supposed to blow them out. They can only be snuffed. I don't know who made up these rules. I was taught it's my candle, it's my spell, it's my breath. I can blow it out. <laughs> it's fine. So don't sweat it. Yeah, just think, just light it again and then let it keep going. Yeah. So what's the meaning of the as the beer and the candle and if it leaves like a black uh, circle around the top after it doesn't? So it's, and it's clear at the bottom. Usually if it's a circle of soot around the top, but clear at the bottom means you fixed whatever the problem was or the blockage. If it's still black all the way down, so it's time to burn another one because it didn't work. That's why you can tell in succession if, it, if, if you do plan it that way, it's like, oh, it's getting clearer and clearer or it's getting worse. I need to take a different approach. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>